Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about an upcoming potential surge in severe weather that is going to come with this huge pattern flip we've been talking about. We're going to talk about all that within this video. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that May will make a comeback as far as severe weather goes? Because it has been quieter than what is typical. Uh, same story with April, but do you think that we're going to see a big flip in the in the severe weather switch uh, and really see it uh, start to ramp up? Or do you think that we're going to see a slower month again and kind of just close out as a slower severe weather season? Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at that surface-based cape or convective available potential energy. This is thunderstorm fuel. The more of this that there is, uh, the more severe weather potential that there is more times than not. Uh, and really, I want you to know that definition because we're going to be using that many, many different times within this video, and I don't want to have to explain it over and over and over again. Uh, so I'm just, you know, explaining it once here in the beginning of the video. Why is there pretty much no cape? That has been pretty much the case for... A few weeks and you know there is some exceptions where we saw some cape move in some severe weather events but overall it has been a much slower period of time here we've had and here's your big answer here's the past five days temperature anomalies and we've basically just had uh extremely cold air compared to what is normal uh move into the eastern two-thirds of the country and this has basically blocked any sort of gulf moisture from making its way northward uh, and that is the answer that's the easy answer for basically why we've had a very limited amount of cape. Now it's been quieter for longer than five days so let's take a look at that seven day temperature anomalies. So this is the past seven days and as you can see it's a lot of the same. That cold air is just completely blocking any of that gulf uh, oranges you can see there in the gulf of Mexico from making their way anywhere onto the United States. Here's the past 15 days and as you can see some of that gulf air has made its way a little bit into the uh, gulf states but hardly any at all. They're still cold dominating the eastern United States over the past 15 days, which is the entire month of May and then a couple of days from April as well. Here is the past 30 days and again it is literally just the same. So this is the second half of April and the first half of May here. Uh, and then here's the past 60 days and this looks a lot more favorable. And this brings us all the way through all of May so far, all of April, and a little bit of March, which is when we were seeing a ton of severe weather. So it makes sense that it looks a lot more favorable once we expand that time frame to where it includes uh, March and everything. So yes, it has been a long time since we've seen a very favorable pattern for severe weather. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to move on. We're going to take a look at the upcoming pattern. Will it look kind of like how it looked in March, or are we going to see a lot of the same? Stay tuned to find out. Now, I wanted to remind you guys, I made a Patreon post again today. I'm trying to put a streak of days together where I've made Patreon posts. Uh, but I made one today going a little bit more in-depth with what we're expecting as far as severe weather, why we're going to see that flip, and when we're going to see that flip towards a much more favorable pattern for severe weather. You can join our Patreon page today and gain access to very awesome posts that usually uh, correlate with the videos and add a little bit more content to them. I, I try to make it related a little bit. I had a lot of new people join just yesterday, uh, so I hope you guys will consider doing so as well. So I just want to show this again. This is the cape today, and it's basically non-existent. So I just wanted to reiterate the fact that we're having practically none, and that is how it's been most of the time. And again, this is the day one temperature anomalies here, and as you can see, that Arctic air is completely blocking out any Gulf air, because all of that air that's green is coming basically from Canada. So you can imagine those northward winds uh, from the north just pushing down towards the gulf and not allowing any winds to head up north from the gulf. Uh, so we're not getting any of that moisture that is required for Cape to develop. Now, by the time we're taking a look at perhaps about Saturday or Sunday here, May, 10, May 15th, 16th time frame, uh, we do begin to get a little bit of Cape moving in. Uh, we're seeing about 1,000 to 2,000 amounts there for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado. That is an area that typically sees severe weather this time of year. We will be watching for that as we see a little bit of a surge in that cape moving up from the south uh, to the north. Here's the temperature pattern by the time we're taking a look at that day. And as you can see, the Arctic air is a little bit less potent. And I think that's why some cape is able to make its way through uh, because those winds from the north are a little bit weaker. That is going to allow for some more of that energy to make its way uh, up into the United States, which is in turn going to basically allow for severe weather to be possible. 
Now, buy time, we're taking a look at about Tuesday. You can see that we will have plenty of cape around for Texas, New Mexico, Louisiana, Mississippi, but especially Texas there. In the reds, we have 3,000 plus. In the in the um, purples down there, we have approaching 4,000 amounts uh, for the Gulf of Mexico. So we are going to have a huge amount of cape. This does not guarantee severe weather, by the way. When you see cape, there might not even be storms around. Uh, but when there is storms around and there is cape, that's when you kind of see that magic duo develop. Uh, that allows for those severe weather events to really, really take place. Uh, but again, sometimes you see large amounts of cape and it never really gets to uh, be used up. Um, that is a quite common occurrence as well, actually. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to continue on with this pattern, just taking a look at it. And we're actually going to take a look at what the GFS has to say as well in just a moment. So here's the temperature pattern by time we're taking a look at that date that we just saw with the cape so this is going to be kind of like monday tuesday time frame that's going to be may 17th through 18th and as you can see we're going to be near normal conditions as far as temperatures are concerned in the eastern united states the full flip has not taken place yet by time we're taking a look at about the pm hours of saturday may uh, 22nd which is going to be quite a while from now uh you can see uh, that we have plenty of cape for all of the regions that I included in the thumbnail, basically, 1,000 plus amounts in the greens are going to be scattered about the entire central United States. Uh, very, very interesting, guys, to see this. The, the yellows are mostly like 1,800 to 2,000 amounts. Uh, so we could start to see some very large severe weather events that span across very large regions as well in the upcoming pattern, which is, again, a lot more common this time of year. We haven't seen those severe weather events really spread too far northward, uh, which has been surprising, but not really once you take a look at the temperature patterns we've seen. Let's take a look at what the temperatures look like on that same frame. And as you can see, warmer overall in the United States, the eastern United States as well, especially. And what that allows is those cape amounts to just shove way, way, way northward up towards where it's even approaching Canada with some cape. Uh, that is what we've seen in turn uh, because of these very warm temperatures. Now, as we look at the GFS, this is going to be the Monday, Tuesday time frame of May 17th, 18th. And this one has a lot more cape. It's showing purples up there for Oklahoma and Texas, which is 3,000 to 4,000 amounts. So already we could tell that this one is a much ma more major solution. Uh, and then by the time we're taking a look at about uh, Thursday, Friday time frame, that's going to be May 20th, May 21st, you can see that we have, again, that widespread uh, cape look that we saw on the European model as well for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, up through even Iowa and Wisconsin, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes included, even the Gulf states, but especially Texas and Louisiana there where we have yellows and oranges. That's 2,000 to 3,000 amounts, which is uh, definitely sufficient. Usually, by the way, we're looking for about 1,000 plus on the cape for severe weather events to take place. Uh, so, Obviously, anything that is double or triple that is going to be highly sufficient for severe weather to develop. Now, real quickly, here is the temperature anomalies around that same time frame. And as you can see, uh, we're near normal, if not warmer than normal for most of these areas. So that is definitely what is going to be the driving force behind the surge in severe weather that will be possible compared to what we have been seeing. I do expect that activity to really just ramp up once we see this warmer air make its way into the eastern United States. It's just going to allow for the whole severe weather pattern to take a turn uh, from what it has been having. Uh, I wanted to remind you guys real quickly, our hurricane season officially starts in two days. It's going to start on May 15th this year. Uh, so we are right around the corner from hurricane season starting. Uh, there is going to be likely, by the time we're taking a look at June, some potential cyclones to take a look at. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more tropical activity videos coming up very, very soon. Usually the severe weather videos are my least popular, and the tropical activity videos are some of my most popular. Uh, so I'm sure uh, there is a lot of you that are looking forward to some of those more tropical-related videos. Uh, obviously, we're not looking forward to storms impacting folks. But even when we're talking about storms that are out the sea and aren't going to be impacting any land, uh, it's usually just more popular in general. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, uh, we are at a 3 out of 6. We've talked about things that are out 10 days plus, so obviously the confidence is a little bit lower, but we're at about 50-50 confidence. I do think there will be a surge to some degree in the severe weather, but it's more about um, the degree of which that will occur. I, it's, I mean, it even varies between the GFS and the European. Obviously, the European had... 
uh, some 1,000, 2,000 amounts head in. The GFS had more like three, four, 5,000 amounts head in. So there is a huge variance in what we could be seeing in the upcoming pattern. But I am extremely confident that there will be a surge of some, of some sort in the severe weather activity. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, have you been enjoying the colder pattern we've been in, or are you ready for the warm temperatures to arrive? And Michaela Soul Speed said, I'm ready for the heat. And this was by far the most liked uh, comment that we had. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of you agreed with that as well. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Lila Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, John Quilisi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this Patreon page and this Patreon end screen, you could do so by joining our very exciting and very awesome Patreon page, where again, you gain access to very awesome posts that usually go alongside these videos. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms One and Catbite for supporting the channel as well. You can, do, you can join this by hitting that button next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like it, destroy the like button, be sure to comment down below as well to just, to just really help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, to suggest this video to more people and be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.